Well, assalamualaikum everyone. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I want to begin first by congratulating you all on the 10th anniversary of Al Hidayah. Uh, mashallah. And just thanking um, Brother Adil Salahi for such a poignant and wonderful expression of not just legacy, but of planting a good seed and then learning how we benefit from it much after. So I wanted to share with you all a reflection about enjoying the good, the importance of doing charitable work, but also in sharing some of my story as the first woman in charge of the Muslim Council of Britain. But before that, I wanted to share with you an important fact. This is my first ever time in Croydon. <laughs> And I was a little bit nervous because on the other side of London, they don't say great things. <laughs> they said, are you sure you're going to be safe? But mashallah, I can confirm, it, it's amazing. The diversity of the community here, the warmth, and also just coming today to this event has embracing. And just even seeing the youngsters here shows the importance of the future that's growing with us. So in reflecting today, what I thought would be important was to start with a story. And the story begins in a school that I visited in Manchester. And in that school, there was a young six-year-old. Um, I was speaking to the school assembly. Uh, it was a Muslim girls' school. And they're all very excited, and, you know, wow, who's Zara? So this little six-year-old, she puts her hand up, and she said, how do you deal with stress? How do you deal with stress? I thought to myself, what has a six-year-old got to do with stress, you know? And we all laughed. And then afterwards, I asked her teacher, and I said, why is she talking about stress? And she said, when they walk to school with their hijabs on, they get verbally abused. They get picked on, you know? And I thought, you know, being a young Muslim today is hard work. Yeah, being a visibly Muslim woman is hard work, <laughs> and being a Muslim generally can be hard work. But we live in a time in which, you know, I'm very blessed to be third generation, and as we discussed, you know, 10 years at the centre, 25 years of the MCB, Brother Abel and I are part of an organisation that's been around for 60 years for Muslim students. And when you think about it is that there always had to be that first generation to do good. To do good and to enjoy good. There had to be that first generation, those people willing to do the things that were terrifying and scary. Because if they didn't do them, how would the future come through? And so this week, for those of you who follow me on social media, I've been touring around the country and I wanted to share with you three stories about where I've been and what I've been up to. At the weekend, we celebrated Eid with Refugees, a campaign that the Muslim Council of Britain is running because we realize that 90% of Muslims in this country, of refugees in this country, are Muslims. 90%. And when they came to this Eid party in Manchester, my colleague Dr. Shazal was there, they didn't speak English, they only spoke Arabic. And most of us were Pakistani or, or Asian, yeah? So we're thinking, how are we going to communicate to our own Muslim brothers and sisters who don't speak what we speak? But in Islam, we're taught how to share love between one another without even words. I can feel it in this room, right? And so with my very bad Arabic, I said to them, Marhaba, welcome. And I said, I hope you know you're most welcome to the family, that we're here for you. And do you know that when our grandfathers came to this country, they didn't speak any English. Everybody looked at them as, who are these strange people? Yeah, who are these halal or mosques? They face racism and abuse. And today, look at us. We get education, we're living here, we can speak well, we can communicate. I said, I hope you know that we're here to help as part of your family. We understand that journey. Because in joining the good and charitable work is loving for your brother and your sister what you love for yourself. Not feeling superior or better, but knowing that one time Allah humbled you. He also put you in that situation 
for those of you who go on the Hajj, and we just celebrated Eid al Adha. Everybody, doesn't matter how intelligent you are, how rich you are, whatever you are, you're in a desert. <laughs> you're hot, you're tired, and only Allah can give you the sustenance you need. Both in your, in Allah, your life is in Allah's hands. So only your survival is with Him, and you're reminded that you can go both, but it's with Allah whether you live or die. How you do, how your good deeds will prosper. And so that first story about enjoying the good is, think of our community that most need our help right now. Think of the community that doesn't have a family, that is looking for a friend. That's not just refugees, but there are many people in our community that are very lonely and isolated. And the second story I wanted to share with you is, I spoke at an event at Butcher's Hall. So Butcher's Hall is in the city of London where all the, you know, the butchers come together. It's hundreds of years old tradition. I was the first Muslim and the first Muslim women ever to speak for this historic occasion where they celebrated Eid. And in my speech, I told them about the story of Prophet Ibrahim I said, do you know, for Muslims, what we eat is also part of our faith. It's our spiritual goodness, yeah? What we eat is so important. It's not just food. I said in the last Eid, we celebrated fasting, giving up, sacrificing, yeah? And in that sacrifice, you know, we came together as communities, you know. And in this Eid, we celebrate our diverse Ummah, the sacrifice of Prophet Ibrahim salam, the sacrifice of the Hujaj. And here we think about Look at that. Allah blessed us with this wonderful ummah of colors and of diversity and culture. And in our unity, we come together to worship Him. Isn't that a beautiful thing? And so I said to these non-Muslims, who had no clue about Eid or, you know, they know about halal because it's multi-billion time industry now. And I said that for us, the purity of our food is about the purity of our faith. And I remarked that we use food, food to come together as communities. We use food to share our love and compassion with one another. And so every good deed of the Muslim, whether small or big, is connected to the Creator and to the goodness in our heart. And they were just like, wow, we didn't know that this was so important to Muslims. Because if you think about those early days and the institutions, you know, I was in America recently. I went to America for a conference. It's very difficult to find halal. It's very difficult to find halal. And I was starving. <laughs> I was so hungry. I, you know, they call it hangry. Hungry and angry. It's, just, it's not a good combination. Especially for a woman, it's not a good look. Um, and I thought, gosh, you know, Allah, please help us find somewhere to eat. We just need something. And I thought to myself, how blessed we are here in the UK, make much halal provision. But also I thought, doesn't Islam teach us so much about disciplining the soul? Even though you want it, you can. Right? Even though I could I could have just eat, you know, I could eat. I couldn't do it. I was like, no, I need to be certain that my food is from the right place, you know? And then the third story I wanted to share with you all. So we're discussing about enjoying the good with the new communities, enjoying the good with the purity of faith and remembering all that Allah has given to us. And I want to talk about enjoying the good for the future. So when I was elected, obviously, being the first woman, but also the youngest, you know, I found out that 50% of Muslims in this country are under the age of 25. Very young community we have. You can see it in the back. Kids are everywhere, yeah? So mashallah, there's many young Muslims. And we know that, like the story I shared, that many of the youngsters had many challenges. Mental health, the breakdown of the family, depression, Muslim poverty. I won't say who. A very prominent person came to see me once at the office. He said, I'm here to see the Secretary General. Is she here? I said, yeah. Where is she? I said, yeah. You're the secretary? Oh, you're so young. I said, 
said, yeah, I am Secretary General, thank you very much. <laughs> so my, my point being is that for us at the MCB, we're looking now to pose the question, what does our future look like together? What does our future look like for young Muslims? And also, what does our future look like here in the UK with wider society? And it's so important that we don't just keep our religion and ourselves to ourselves, but that we are open in our relationships, our communication, and in building better societies for everybody. Because our Holy Prophet <laughs> told us, peace be upon him, that the best of the believers are the best to all of humanity. Goodness is not just reserved for the Muslims. Goodness is for all of humanity. So you have to ask yourself, not just what am I doing for my brothers and sisters, but what am I doing for everybody? Is there a poor person on my street? Is there an elderly couple or family that need my help? Is there someone that needs a conversation right now? Can I be helping with my school? Can I be helping with my kids? There's so many things that we could be doing to help make society better because it is our duty to do so. So in my concluding remarks and my thanks to you all for celebrating 10 years is to really congratulate Al Hidayah. What you've done today is shown that you continue to serve diverse communities. You continue to bring together hearts and minds. You continue to enjoy the good and charitable deeds. But most importantly, you continue to give the invitation for goodness, which is the most important thing. Just making that intention and inviting all of the community to work together. So I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah accepts it from us. He grants us his shade. He continues to enjoy, make us a source of goodness for all. Continue to bless us and make us among those that he loves the most. Amen. Thank you so much for listening.